Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever it is where you are, and welcome back to another video on the Annoyed Dad channel. In today's video, we are going to start a brand new series where we are going to hatch and incubate eggs. And what we are going to do is we are going to start off right from the very, very start, at the beginning, looking at our eggs. Then we're going to incubate them, then we're going to hatch them, then we're going to grow them on, then we're going to slaughter them, then we're going to eat them. Okay, the last two we will do, but only to the birds that we don't actually require. So this is the start of a brand new series. We will follow these eggs right the way through. So if you've never hatched anything before, or if you want to learn some new skills, if you want to try things a slightly different way and learn how somebody else does it, then this is the video series for you. We are doing it live as if it were as it happens so we're filming this in 2020 we're starting in march and we're going through so if you're just picking us up in say march april may 2020 we are just starting out if you're picking us up later then obviously check the playlist because all the videos are going to be there so to start off with we're going to choose our eggs as you can see in front of us we have got a plethora of eggs let me explain what we've got so we'll start off, we'll clear out some of the biggies because they're all going in the incubator. So these are goose eggs. A little bit of muck on that one. But these big ones are goose ones. Okay, so that's goose again. Now most people, they don't hatch goose eggs because geese are big birds. They only lay for a little part of the year. And then we've got another two here. They only lay for a little part of the year. And the eggs take approximately 35 days to hatch out. But again, they need the 37.5 degrees C to hatch out. Okay, so we've got rid of the goose eggs. They're all going into one incubator. We will follow those, don't worry about that. Every single one of those goose eggs can be hatched. I'll explain why in just a second. Next up, you'll see here we've got a turkey egg. But we currently only have just the one turkey egg. That's the only one that's been laid by the girl. So what we'll do is we will store that with the pointy end pointing downwards and we'll wait a few more days and we will see what else comes out. So what we are left with, I'll take these ones out and put them all in. So there we go. I'll take the turkey egg and I'll put that over to one side. So we're left with a load of chicken eggs. I've got another two in there and it looks like a couple of duck eggs might have crept in but that doesn't matter for the purposes of this video they will actually have to explain a few things let me just move the camera just a little bit so what we're looking for in the eggs these eggs have come straight out of the nest boxes they've been lifted up and they've all been stored with the pointy end down that is how you should always store your hatching eggs with the pointy end pointing down. These have come off the farm in the last couple of days. You don't really want hatching eggs that are more than, a, more than a week old. You can have your cooking eggs more than a week old, that's perfectly fine. And indeed, if you are going to have hard boiled eggs, having an egg which is more than a week old is easier to peel than if you try to peel a fresh egg. Whereas if you want a poached egg, having a fresh egg is better than having a week old egg. One of the strange things about cooking. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at these eggs and we're going to choose which ones we're going to use and which ones we aren't going to use. So instantly you can see that there are a few, like this one here, that are just either odd sized or oddly shaped. This I suspect is what is called a fart egg. Yep, you did hear that right, F-A-R-T, fart egg. It's laid by a bird and it's either the first egg they lay or if they've had an extended period where they haven't laid and then they come back into lay again they lay what's called a fart egg and it is literally just a little egg that they just fart out basically so they're no good for hatching we're not going to do them and if you look at the rest of this board you can see there is one here that is megaly oversized and that's no good for hatching you want pretty much a uniform appearance across the board and if you look at this one here, and I hope you can see that, I'll try and get it so it focuses in, you can see that rather than it being an egg shaped, 
even though it is an egg, I know, don't, please don't comment down below, but it is egg shaped because it's an egg. No, um, rather than it being egg shaped, it's more of an oblong. So it's a bit of a strange shape. A little bit like a potato, really, as I look at that, as it spins around. Um, but again, you don't want that. Odd shaped eggs, um, they aren't any good at all. The reason being is because you want your chicks to grow happy and healthy and a happy and healthy chick will grow in an egg that is egg shaped, that is the right size and that is perfect. Well, as perfect as you can get. So looking at our tray here, the next thing you can see is that we have a couple that are absolutely caked in mud. This is mud on them, this isn't the design. And the reason why they're caked in mud is because the month of February and March have just been nothing but rain for us. And the whole ground has just gone muddy. So as the girls walk through the mud, they get the mud on them. They then transfer that to the nest boxes and from the nest boxes, it gets transferred onto the eggs as they come through. So it's a constant battle once it starts to rain to actually keep the eggs clean. But you don't want muddy eggs. Now there will be some people out there who will say, or it's fine, you just get a cloth and you just wipe it off and you get rid of all that mud and then you incubate it and it'll be perfect, don't you worry about it. But then there's other people out there who will say that if you take the cloth and you wipe it off, you're also going to wipe off the microscopic film which is over the egg which actually protects the inside of the eggs. So on a personal level, I don't like to wipe them off. But what I will do is I'll look at eggs like this one here, which have got just a little bit of dirt on them, and if I can just rub it off with my thumb, I will do. I have found my own personal experiences is that a little bit doesn't make a lot of difference. A lot does make a difference. So now we've narrowed down our eggs. We'll get rid of that one there as well. That one there's a bit grubby. And see that one there is sort of on the limit of what I would do. But it'll be interesting to see. We'll remember this one when they come to hatching out, if they do or not. So we've got our eggs. I have to excuse the sound of my dog in the background. See, I'm gonna reject that one, because that one there's a little bit small, a little bit odd shaped. See, that's a nice clean one that came out today. I know that, because I remember picking it up and thinking, ooh, that's a nice clean one. And I'm going to reject that one there because if you if you look, if I lift up, you can see from whatever angle you look at, it is bigger than all of the other eggs. If there was a few that size, I wouldn't be quite so nervous about doing it. Well, I wouldn't, not really nervous, but um, so objectionable to doing it. But um, otherwise, there we go. So that's our eggs. So a quick recap, these eggs are all less than a week old. These eggs have all been stored with the pointy tip downwards. These eggs are all pretty much as clean as you're going to get them straight off the farm. They are mostly of a uniform size and a uniform weight. You might have spotted I went around and I picked up every single one. And you can tell if there is one that is exceptionally heavy or exceptionally light. Whilst their whole height might not be uniform, I can look and I can see that one, two, three, four, five there are pretty uniform. And these ones down the front are pretty uniform. So even though they might not all match exactly because I've got mixed breeds and mixed birds, they're pretty much okay. These guys have also been stored inside for 24 hours to bring them up to room temperature. And they are now at the point where they're ready to go. They have not been left to get cold. They have not been left to get too hot. So they're now ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in the incubators and we're gonna load them into the incubators and we will make a start on hatching these eggs as well as the goose eggs. Okay, so now we've chosen our eggs for hatching. What we're gonna do is we're gonna load them into the incubator. For this video, for some of the eggs, we are gonna be using a Brincy Octagon 10. Now this is quite an old incubator and it's a manual turn incubator, but that doesn't really matter because it will just help me to explain what we're going to do, why we're doing it, 
and exactly how we're doing it. So as you can see the tray that they go into has got these dividers and these are just basically used just to hold the eggs into place wherever we want them to be. So all we do is we just place the eggs in and you can see we're placing these in with the pointy end down and just go along Now at this stage, whilst it is good to leave a little gap in between the eggs, it's not massively important. Okay, The eggs will move about, they will roll around, they will change as we move the incubator over, because it is a manual turn when we're just able to roll this one from side to side. So those sort of things will change. It's only when you get to the later stages that you need to allow a little bit more room for the eggs. But just at the moment, this is fine. So the eggs have been loaded into the incubator. The incubator has been on. It's been on for a full 24 hours. Really, just to warm it up, make sure everything is working fine and that the temperature reaches a level and then it levels out and everything is good to go. So with the eggs in, we close up the incubator and it is now ready to be turned on. Now with these ones, because they are chicken eggs, we're looking for 38.5 degrees C and it will take roughly 21 days. But what we will do is we will come back on day number 8 and we will have a look at it and we will come back on day number 18 and we'll have another look at it again. But up until that stage we're just going to leave it be. We don't need to touch it other than to rotate it and we're going to do that three or four times a day. And we are going to check it to candle it and we'll see. Now working out your days, I'll grab a piece of paper and I will show you how to work out your days. So when we're working out the days for how many days it's going to be. Today is March the 17th and we are on, let me zoom you in a little bit so as you can see. So this is classed as day zero because you're starting now so you're starting at zero so tomorrow it will be the 18th and that will be day number one once we get to this time tomorrow that's day number one and then you've got the 19th which will be day number two and the 20th which is day number three and you work it out from there and that is how you do it you do not start at day number one you always start at day number zero so I'll now do some clever maths and I'll put up on the screen when we're going to candle these and when stuff is going to happen. So yeah, join us in the next video because we have done everything up to this stage now where the eggs are ready to go. In the next video we are going to candle the eggs and we will look and see how they're growing, hopefully, what they're doing and we can explore it from there. Like I said, you don't need to touch your eggs again now unless you have to turn your incubator, you don't open the incubator, you don't do anything else that might stop the growing process. Just leave your incubator in a warm location, in a constant temperature place, and everything should go as planned. So let's jump over to the next video. It'll be the next video down in the playlist, or else I'll put a link up in the top corner here somewhere for it. And uh, yeah, until then, bye bye. So I just thought I would show you quickly where the incubators are. They're actually set up in the corner of my uh, rather messy dining room. You can see the kids have got their Xbox gear and books and yeah, where they play the Xbox over there. So it's a great thing to have just in the corner of the room because it's uh, relatively quiet. There's not a lot that really happens in here other than just the kids playing on the Xbox and they can be quite quiet. But the dogs also come back and forward all the time. So it's really handy when the dogs are coming backwards and forwards and you know you're getting towards the end because the chicks start to chirp inside the eggs and that drives the dogs wild well it doesn't drive them wild the dogs become incredibly inquisitive and you know you're getting close once the dogs start to show some interest hopefully i'll pick that up and you'll be able to see it at the end of the videos but yeah there's the two incubators set up i'm going to turn on the other ones outside as well and get them going as well 
But there we go, they're set up, ready to go, and I just thought you would like to see that.